Good evening, we are live in the River Island Oxford Circus Store. Uh, welcome to the Love Not Labels panel event. Hi to everybody on Facebook and to Instagram. Um, my name's Liam Hackett. I'm the founder and CEO of the international anti-bullying charity Ditch the Label. Uh, we're super, super proud to be collaborating with River Island on the Love Not Labels uh, range. You can see we've all got the t-shirts on tonight. Um, this range is really, really important to us because we know from our research that two in three of all young LGBT plus kids have at some point experienced bullying. And we know that the impacts of bullying can be catastrophic. We know that those who experience bullying are far more likely to develop things like depression and anxiety, and in extreme circumstances consider suicide as a result. And so this range and this conversation tonight is so, so important. We're going to be talking about some really topical issues. We're going to be talking about Pride. It's Pride Month. Uh, happy Pride to everybody. Um, but that's enough about me. I want to hand over to our panellists. Uh, if you all introduce yourselves, tell us a bit more about what you do uh, and why Pride is so important to you, starting with Doug. My name is Doug Armstrong. I am an online content creator. Um, I've been doing that for the last five or so years as my, like, my full-time thing. Um, so it's great fun because I get to like, work for myself, make content, do what I want. Um, I've been doing a lot of music recently, so I write LGBT songs. Uh, or like comedy LGBT songs, um, so things like It's Okay to Be Gay, uh, I Really Want a Boyfriend, uh, it hasn't worked yet, uh, hopefully. <laughs> uh, things like that, and yeah, so I basically just live my life online and uh, create videos, music, things like that. And um, I just love Pride because I feel like everyone comes together. Um, it was supposed to be a month, but now it's like the whole summer, it's great, and uh, everyone just kind of gets to be themselves even more so than usual, so yeah, it's a good one. Sure. Hey guys, my name is Kenny Jones, I'm 24 years old and I'm a model and activist. Um, I've kind of just blew up in the media in terms of like March this year, so it's been quite fun just doing different things and like River Island is definitely a brand that I've looked up to for many a year, so this has been amazing and fun. Um, in terms of like pride for me, it's just kind of coming together, like that family vibe that you get around LGBT, because there's not that many places that everybody kind of interlinks and Pride just smashes out the park so I'm always looking forward to Pride so London Pride this weekend yeah <laughs> hey guys my name's Charlie um, I'm a trans activist and author um, and Pride for me is obviously about celebration and it's a big party and stuff it's also really important to remember that it started off as a protest and it was a protest started by predominantly trans women of colour and I feel like it's really important that when we're celebrating, not to forget trans women of colour who are being murdered, like, not to bring up the tone down, but it's really important to talk about the fact that the murders of trans women of colour are growing up every year. So I think for me, this year, Pride is about remembering that Pride side as a protest and uh, celebrating, but also keeping it, like, political, because Pride should be political. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Oh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> like, Miss World answer. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Roxanne. I am a rapper and thanks for River Island, the model. I'm joking. Um, yeah, <laughs> to me, Pride is really important to me. Sorry to copy everyone else, but it brings everyone together. But again, um, I'm following off what Charlie said, I am also celebrating Pride this Saturday, but I'm also celebrating Black Pride, which not a lot of people know about. You know, it's sad that minorities feel that they have to um, segregate themselves because when they try to go into um, black brands and black cool little um, pride organizations, London Pride wouldn't have them. So I'm definitely also for protesting and bringing everyone together. We can't say we're gay, love us, you know, give us freedom if we're not going to involve everyone. Why are we yeah. discriminating minorities, you know? So yeah, that's what Pride is to me. Yeah. Let's get it for real. I think one thing that I really love about Pride is when we look over the past five or six years, it has become so inclusive and it's not just the LGBT plus community who are engaging in Pride, it's straight allies, it's literally everybody. I think it's a really, really great movement. Does anybody remember their first Pride experience? I don't remember mine because there's been so many, it's all morphed into one now. <laughs> Um, I, I guess I was a little bit of a late bloomer in terms of sort of coming to terms with myself and who I am. So, um, and the first few years that it was like summer and Pride and stuff in London, uh, I was actually away in America. So uh, my first Pride was only two years ago in Brighton. So it wasn't actually that long ago. Um, and I just yeah remember it as just one of the funnest weekends ever. It was just crazy. Everyone's just. You can just be standing next to someone and you feel like you can just chat to them because it's so easy. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's kind of there for the same reasons, everyone's kind of similar. And it was just like a big, happy, fun place. 
So yeah, um, and there's many more to come. So I'm looking forward to Saturday this weekend as well. I think anything goes at Pride, doesn't it? Really? Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like such zero a judgment. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. And there's such a like, I've never come away from Pride not feeling uplifted and empowered. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I'm sorry, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to talk a little bit about growing up as LGBT+, and a little bit about our experiences. I mean, the reason I started Ditch the Label is because I was bullied for 10 years. And, you know, it was that bad I was hospitalized at one point. And I remember I didn't really have much of a support network. I grew up in a small town in the north, and um, I didn't know anybody who was LGBT. And uh, I, I fancied this guy. And this was back in the days of MSN, and I told him. And he printed the chat log out and showed what? it to everybody in school. Oh, and, oh um, my God. You know, that was that. so, so difficult because you, you're raised in this heteronormative world and you already feel bad about who you are and yourself. And to not have that support network there was really difficult. And so I turned to MySpace, that's how old I am, and talked about my experiences. <laughs> and, you know, I realised that this was a massive issue. It was affecting a lot of kids. And that's where Ditch Label came from. What about you guys? It was a similar thing with me, so like I started now transphobia because of the transphobia I was facing, so it was kind of like a way of dealing with that. I think often the only way to get through life is to like take positives from negatives and try and turn bad things into good things, because otherwise I don't, I don't think I'd want to be here, like it's the only way to get through it sometimes. So I was, when I transitioned I started getting like, like I'm not, I can't put into words, I feel anti like transition, especially yeah. as a trans woman, and like being working class, it was just like next level the amount of abuse I was getting just on an everyday basis. And I was like, I think the only way for me to cope with this is to try and do something positive. So like I'm educating people, so like it's, yeah, it was just a way of me processing it a bit. So um, yeah, that's why I started doing what I do because of what I was going through. Mm. Yeah. So how about you? Um, I, so I grew up, I feel like in kind of a little bubble because I was in uh, kind of a small town um, in like a private school and it just like, wasn't really any other gay people in the school. Um, so I didn't really have any sort of gay models to relate to when I was growing up. So I didn't really sort of even know that that was kind of an option until I was like much older, until I was kind of like 18-ish. Um, so yeah, I mean, growing up, I guess I was, I was lucky that I was never really bullied, but I just didn't have the opportunity to figure myself out until a much later age just because it was less of a sort of known thing where I was and where I grew up in this little bubble mm. um, and there wasn't things like like River Island putting on their pride collection back then and uh, other brands doing the same and there wasn't films like Love Simon that came out recently that was like a massive Hollywood like film about a gay couple like that didn't exist yeah. when I was growing up sort of yeah 10 years ago or so so um uh, yeah, I wish those things did exist back then, they don't, but at least they do now and um, it's sort of, the words getting out there more and more and, you know, with people going to pride parades and things like that, and more so, it's just becoming bigger and better, which is awesome. Kenny, how did you find it? I just got tired of being outed, to be honest, as being yeah. a trans man. Like, my era wasn't the best and it was just continuous and I feel like a lot of the guys I had felt like I was competition and that was a way to degrade me from women liking me because it would always be like on a house party, someone would take an interest. Like, you know that was a girl, right? I just got tired of it. I was like, do you know what? If I can be in a position where I can choose how my story comes out, I'd rather do that than allow someone else to tell my truth. So, and plus there was no like trans guys that I looked up to, you know, there wasn't many. And I was just like, I just want to be that guy then. Yeah. Like, I want to set the example for people and I'm happy that where I am today, I feel like I've done a lot for the community. I want to do so much more. How about you, Roxanne? Um, I'm from Birmingham, so up north again, Woo. or West Midlands. Woo -woo. I'm not even from Birmingham. Yeah. But. Yeah, I, I, we're northern, so it's the same kind of thing. Um, for me, I was, I, I keep saying, my friends laugh. I wasn't gay in Birmingham. I never knew. I never, um, I wasn't ex not exposed, but I never saw it anywhere. Mm. And then the gays that I did see didn't represent me. It was uh, quite butch, lesbians, you know, didn't wear makeup, didn't really have a lot of swag or care about what was going on. So for me, it was when I came to London and then in music, um, my girlfriend at the time was in music. She had an interview. I, I, I hid it from everyone. Everyone kind of knew, you know, you're on the down low, coming out the closet, as they say. And she had an interview with the Metro and she told them that she was dating me. And then literally the week after they printed, MC Roxanne is the one for me. So it kind of came out in the, I woke up to like 93 missed calls, um, mixed race, um, Irish Catholic and Jamaican like Rastafarian. So it really was a big thing. It gave everyone a war. yeah. It really was a big thing. But for me, at the time, I felt like I wanted to die. But it was the best, looking back now, it was the best thing ever because I just had to own myself yeah. and own who I am. And since then, 
I've just been unstoppable. I, I love being gay, I love being me, and I wouldn't change it for the world, yeah. And I think what's so powerful about the internet and social media is we're so quick to judge it and say it's a bad thing, but actually it's a really great tool for young LGBT plus kids now who perhaps don't have representation in their local communities. It's a really great venue for them to access that advice and support and to follow role models who are like them. I think it's super, super important. But how about as, you know, I think there's sometimes a, a misconception because we have so much visibility and brands like River Island have these fantastic pride collections. I think sometimes there is this perception that homophobia and transphobia just doesn't exist anymore. And from my experience, um, I sometimes feel uncomfortable holding my boyfriend's hand in public because it, like, the sentiment of it becomes political. Yeah. And we've had it where people have just stirred us out on the underground, and this is in London. We've had comments, and you know, it trivializes the whole thing. And holding hands with somebody is just you showing a sign of affection. Yeah. But how about you guys? Have you had any experiences of homophobia, transphobia? I have. All the I get it all the time. My girlfriend, sorry to everyone look at sorry to make everyone look at you, but yeah, my girlfriend's <laughs> beautiful, and we are always on the tube or out and about, and guys still come up to her, and they. It's quite sad when they get intimidated because she's not interested and then they think that I want to be a guy because I'm the mas more masculine in the relationship. And then I've had people get quite violent. Oh, you think you're a guy? Yeah, well, I, don't know, will you fight like a guy? All just because you tried to talk to my girlfriend and she's not interested. You know, they try to intimidate you or make you out to be this masculine figure that I've never said I was. I'm still a girl, I'm just a tomboy, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I get it, we get it all the time. Charlie, how about you? Yeah, like exactly the same. Like it comes from into like men being insecure a lot. Like I like I can't put into words how much abuse I get because I feel like with being gay, it's not as visible. Well, it is visible often, but like it, you can choose for it not to be. You can like dress down or whatever. But like with being trans, I look very um, visibly trans. So the amount of abuse I'm like look a lot better is the wrong word, but like I have had surgery and stuff on my face to make my face look more feminine and stuff. But back like two years ago when I started transitioning, I looked very different. You can, you can see it for yourself on my Instagram feed. But like, um, and it meant that I was just getting so much abuse. I literally, I'd say like a Hail Mary before I left the house every day because that's how much abuse I was getting. I was getting attacked constantly, sexually assaulted, like just constant like stream of abuse. Like, and it's next level. And it's like, the, I, I didn't, like having lived my life as a, I, I definitely wasn't a gay man, but before transition, like identifying as a gay guy, I was getting a lot of abuse then. And I didn't think it'd be much different, but it was like 10 times worse. Like it was like ridiculous. And I like, now I'm lucky I don't really get it because I've kind of assimilated and stuff. But like, it, yeah, it's, it's next level. And this is in London. Like I grew up in London. I've lived in London my whole life. And this is happening in London, like you said, on the tube, like in London, like it's next level. And we like to think of London as being this hugely accepting place, but there's still issues. Doug, how have you found it being so prolific online? Like, how do you deal with that level of abuse? I think um, online, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, I almost become immune to it, I think, because it's just been happening for so long. I almost just kind of laugh it off now. I think that's just the only way to deal with it because if I let it get to me I just it would yeah not be great so I just see those comments and I'm just like oh poor you like you just you're less educated you just don't understand and like I wish they were I wish that they could sort of um come like realize but they don't so yeah I think I've just kind of gotten used to it over time which is like a bit of a sad thing that you do have to get used to it um but yeah even I mean it comes in all levels because even just I'm lucky that I sort of I feel like I get nothing to sort of your levels of abuse in London but even just I would wear my uh, the, I had the pride merch from last year London pride it's like obviously like basically saying I'm gay and I just like wear that to my gym sometimes and I still get like little looks and it's still you just feel it even if it's not like people coming and abusing me you still sort of feel those eyes um, like kind of judging you so it's still definitely prolific even in a place like London and um you know, how important do you think it is for brands like River Island to provide that visibility and to partner with organisations like Ditch the Label? I think it's, I was going to say, I think it's a really good way of like showing people that's not okay to be like that, like what we've just said. Like yeah. it's a way of like, say, like I always say prejudice only blossoms in places that's allowed to. And whether that's in a, a small scale place, like in a workplace or in a, in, in a group of friends or in a society. And if a brand, big brands, like global brands are saying it's okay to be gay or trans or whatever, it's not okay to be homophobic. It's, it's showing people don't, don't not in our store. Yeah. And that's, that's sending out a loud and clear message that it's not okay to be yeah. those ways. 
sorry, finishing off what you said. The other day, um, I was having a conversation and somebody said that if you don't show it, people won't get used to it. So yeah. like yeah. even holding hands, they were talking about like, it's like 85% of gay people don't like to hold hands because they feel weird in public when yeah. again, they just want to show affection. So the guy finished up saying, if you don't show it, then no one's going to get used to it. Like we're so used to straight people and we think that's normal um, because we see it everywhere, you know? So ri- brands like River Island, they're showing it, they're seeing it, it's everywhere. It's yeah. not just in a little corner as well, yeah. in the shop, it's everywhere. You walk yeah. in, it's pride, it's, you yeah. know what I mean? So it's really important. People and I have need to, to get say, used to it. It is know? literally everywhere. You guys can't see it on <laughs> Facebook and Instagram, but it is all over the store. It the really gay agenda. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the millennials want. <laughs> uh, Kenny, how about you? I think it's important because it's just more, you know, recognition at the end of the day. So all about exposure. And I think that the more people are used to it, the more they kind of become open. I think the, where we are today and why Pride is such a popular thing now is because years after years of build up and promotion behind it. And now we're in a situation where there are people that aren't in the LGBT community that want to come down to Pride and want to enjoy it and want to embrace, you know, the whole community. Yeah. And I think that's such a powerful thing that not only we're getting involved, but people that are interested and just want to have a different experience yeah. are involved now. Doug, you touched on something uh, very gently about um, you know, the people who are putting the abuse online and the people who are homophobic in public. And I think it's always really important to understand that that comes from a place. And we've done loads of research on it at Ditch the Label and we really wanted to understand why people bully. And we found that often they're going through something stressful or traumatic. There's studies to show that people who are homophobic, or tra- uh, homophobic specifically far more likely to be suppressed in their own sexuality. And so I think there's always a root cause and an issue. But one thing I wanted to talk about before we go into the positive stuff is, is there a feel that within the LGBT plus community there are issues? Do we feel that it's as diverse and as accepting as some people might think it is? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think there's still kind of the own, we all kind of battle against each other. Especially like being trans, I think that, you know, if you get a lesbian that's quite butch, they see you as quite competition, which I think is the wrong way to see it. At the end of the day, we're all here to enjoy ourselves and be around this community. But I just feel like a, it can be a battle sometimes. And it's definitely kind of being the involvement of trans people as well. It's very segregated from yeah. the whole LGBT. I feel like the T is just there. Not in it. Yeah, it's definitely like a hierarchy. I think it's really important to remember that just because, and it's a two way street when I say that there's gay people who are transphobic, it's also important to remember there's trans people who are homophobic. Like there's, yeah. I wasn't, I'm not gonna say names, but we all know there's a certain famous trans woman who doesn't agree with gay marriage. Like, so it's not, it's really important to remember that just because we're in the same community, there's, there's still a lot of infighting. And I think that's, it's really sad because I think we're all marginalized. If we all stick together, that's the way to, take over like do you know what I mean that's the only way to win is if we all come together mm. yeah I mean yeah it is a shame when you see it um, there's it's still such a horrific thing like gay bashing people saying oh like you're too gay or like oh I'm straight acting gay like all, all that kind of stuff it's like it's silly really when as you say like we're all still kind of being attacked from the outside so why should we be doing that to our, ourselves it's, mm. it's, um, it's a shame but like it, we're not, yeah, we're not quite there yet. Um, it's not perfect, but mm-hmm. hopefully soon. So on to the positive stuff. How did you all find being in the new uh, um, River Island campaign? How was it? I love the photos, by the way. Have we all seen them? We've all seen the photos. <laughs> I love the photos. Still too. <laughs> all for it. My Tinder is lit, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <laughs> so thank you, River Island, for all the boys. <laughs> It was fun. It was a really fun day. Um, yeah, I love fun. Charlie. She really brought me out of myself. I was probably the most, um, what do you call it, the most close and the most nervous, I would say. It was amazing. Everyone was really nice. The team was really nice. We was having a laugh. We had Janelle Monet in the background, so I was getting my pink on. It was good. It was good, yeah. Yeah, I mean, love the photos. And like, it's just such a cool campaign to be part of, um, having never sort of done anything like this before. Yeah. It was really cool. And yeah, still got the uh, like the picture of me wearing this, doing that as my like profile picture everywhere as well. Yeah. Change the background now to make it all pridey. You got so rid of the blue. Pink. Well, no, it's oh, pink. I love the blue. That's the best bit. No, it's pink. Just kidding. It was pink. Oh yeah, not this one. It's a different one. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, now it's a rainbow behind me, so it's like super pride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you find it, Kenny? Oh, I loved it. It was so fun. Like I've done bits and bobs and modelling, but I think this was definitely one for the record books. It's just a case of 
how it was pulled together. Thank you to Adam for putting it all together. Yes. Um, he's been yeah. amazing Should and just kind of the support that we've had. <laughs> Um, and how much exposure that they've tried to continue to do after just doing the photos like yeah. today has been yeah. great, so. Is it even worth me asking, do you have a favorite piece or you are in them? Yes, I'm wearing mine. <laughs> I, I, like, I like this. I'm proud. <laughs> the, oh, yeah, you this, can't see it. This, is my this one here, yeah, go babe. Shake, <laughs> shake it, shake what your mama gave you, that one. <laughs> if you haven't seen the full range, there's way more available. It's on the River Island website and they're in specific stores and in Oxford Circus as well. Um, right, before we take questions from the audience, um, quite a tricky question. What kind of advice would you give to people who aren't LGBT plus, who want to support our community? Uh, starting with Roxanne. Um, don't be scared. Our community is not just for us. You know, I think I've got friends that say, oh, I, I was saying today earlier, come, if you're coming to Pride, let me know. Like, give me a call, come and meet me. Oh, no, I'm not gay. Like, it's not just, <laughs> you don't have to go there and say, you know what I mean? Sorry, I won't say it, because, yeah. But you don't have to go and be, yeah. You don't have to be gay to be Pride. It's, a, it's an amazing day. It's good energy. Everyone, it's almost like a carnival, isn't yeah. it? So it's just, no, no, it's a celebration. Yeah. It's yeah. a celebration where anything goes. Love is the main word, and... Yeah, come down. Don't be scared. We don't buy it. <laughs> Unless you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I've heard rumours. <laughs> oh. uh, I would say for me, my and it's a bit more... Um, less positive but it's, po it's a positive outcome but I would say it kind of goes back to what I said about um, standing up and letting people know that think like the fact that prejudice only blossoms where it's allowed to it's about calling out so it's about like coming to pride and celebrating pride with us if you if you want to be an ally but also being an ally in your everyday life so whether if you're in your group of friends and someone says something that's not okay like we're a bit homophobic or transphobic call it out and you can do this in a really non-confrontational way even in a fun way or whatever if you see a status on Facebook if you're in the workplace and something happens like you we need you if you want to be an ally and come party with us you need to be there for the, the bad as well as the good. You need to stand up and, and like I said, it doesn't have to be you don't have to have fights, but you and I need to call it out. And that's how we're gonna stop homophobia and transphobia is by not letting it blossom. Yeah. Before we come to Kenny, if you're on Instagram and Facebook, start sending us your questions right now. We're gonna try and get through as many as we possibly can. Uh, and on to Kenny. I think that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my train of thought, sorry. Um, Advice. I think for go I think go out. Like I think I used to take a lot of my straight friends out with me. Yeah. Imagine they're all like six foot, two beards. And I just used to, I was like five foot at this point as well. And I'd be like, guys, come to the gay club with me. And to be fair, once they was around it and they seen, you know, there's bisexual people there as well. There's a place for everybody, like come and drink. They used to, Kenny, when are we going out next? So I think it's just about in, making them feel invited as well as, you know, yeah, welcome, exactly. Just kind of coming into our lives a bit and just finding out if it's for you or not. You know, you'll have fun. You just reminded yeah. me, I have to say, um, I took my mum to a gay club. I've only took her once. And I had to go to the loo and I was a bit worried about leaving her on her own. I came back, she was surrounded by a gaggle of gays. Yes! <laughs> yes. Great. That's it. Mama Hackett. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Doug? Yeah, I think, like, I mean, that's the ultimate goal, really, of, like, all of our straight friends and even, like, people that, like, don't have gay friends can be to that level. But even if it's just something as simple as just, like, being like, I support you, and like, just like a little message. Like, people got to start somewhere, so uh, just be supportive in any way that you can. Yeah. I think uh, would be awesome. Great, thank you. Yeah. Uh, do we have any questions from Instagram and Facebook? Yeah, we do. Well, first of all, there's someone lovely called Jamie just giving you a shout out, saying, "Yes, loving this. Love is love. We should support and be proud." Yeah. So I guess yes. that leads me to ask, what are you all really proud of? What makes you 100% proud? <laughs> oh. mm. Um, represent the trans community. I think I'm proud that I've been able to, you know, I went through 10 years of being bullied and I've turned it into a positive for people. I just, I find I'm just always getting more and more proud to be myself and be my, my real self without sort of holding back. Uh, I've just noticed over the last, like, even sort of three years, I've just been more proud to be me and just not worry what other people think as much. So, yeah. Yeah, I am following the same. Um, I'm proud of, especially in the music industry, you know, hip hop and grime over here, it's very straight, it's very male orientated. I think I'm proud that I stand my own and I won't write about he because it's not real to me. You know what I mean? I'm proud that I'm really honest with my music. Yeah. 
I'm proud that we're all sitting here for like a global <laughs> brand, like as LGBT yeah. people sitting on a Facebook Live, like living our best lives, our best gay <laughs> lives. Like, do you know what I mean, that's something. Like, we've come so far as a community to be doing this now. Like, it's so good, yeah. so so good. Living so, our so best gay. gay lives. It sounds like yeah. a reality yeah. series. Yes, yes make it a reality hashtag. series. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk later. Yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah. What would we change about Pride? Ooh. Before anyone, we all say, I wouldn't segregate minorities. So there wouldn't be Black Pride, it would be yeah. Pride, Pride, literally. Yeah. Yeah. Same com. with Trans Pride. There's a yeah. Trans Pride I'd like yeah. incorporate, Trans Pride, Black Pride. What, like, I'd just make it more inclusive. It really needs to be, like I said, it was started by trans women of color. So there's trans women yeah. and the black women, do you know what I mean? The people who are being left out. So it's really important to like make them part of it because they started it. So. I think what I do, you know, you always get those people in the Bibles. I tell them it was, Put somewhere out so they go to the wrong <laughs> venue. Yeah. Oh, what is, that? is is there a maybe I'm just being really dumb, is there like a, a global pride day? Because that would be awesome. Oh. Yeah, where it was like, well it's yeah, world pride, pride only happens like every four years. But it needs to like happen every every week. Sundays. Yeah. Pride day. Yeah. yeah. That's what I did. <laughs> Kenny, how about you? I would just extend it. Yeah. <laughs> just extend it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 65 days. Yeah, yeah, like bigger, bigger party. Exactly. Well. Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. Pride. That'd, that'd be like so the good. Winter Olympics <laughs> and like the Olympics, <laughs> like winter, uh, winter pride. And everyone's like in like puffer jackets. It <laughs> <and laughs> would be so good. You know what? I feel like we've made so much progress over the past few years though, because if you go back five years ago, like the visibility of pride and us as a community was minimal. It was very raw. And now I don't think you can walk down Oxford Circle. No. No. I've seen it every five meters. And I think that's great. I think yeah. it's a huge sign of progress. Yeah, definitely. Have we got in time for more questions? I think we have. Um, so one for Charlie. Now as transphobia, why do you think it's worked so well? It's been hugely successful. What is it about that that works, do you think? Um, I think it's about like what a few of the people on the panel have said about like, um, speaking out of your echo chamber to people who aren't part of the community, making them unscared, like making them feel comfortable and stuff like So basically, just for those who don't know, I travel around the country with a pop-up nail salon, offer the public free manicures for the chance to sit down and have a chat with a trans person. And it just gives them a chance to ask questions and stuff. And I think what, that's what we need to be doing more of. We have every right to be angry and every there's a lot of stuff that we should be angry about and stuff. But when you're, when you approach it with a different attitude, with kindness and not fighting back, you're able to get people in and like start that conversation. I think that's what we need more of as a society, as an LGBT community, is like conversation with straight people and with people who have never met a gay person or a trans person. That's how they're going to understand is when they see our humanity. So I think that's what we need more of is conversation. Have you ever had like, because I love your concept of, of nail transfer, I literally think it's amazing. Have you ever had like one of those moments that's just been like really defining of what it is that you do that's hit home and said, this is why I do what I do. You know what? Every event I have done, I've had, I've left with that feeling. And that's how I've been, I've done it for five years now, like so half a decade. And it's like, that's why I'm, I do it so four yeah. five years. because I just leave knowing that like I've sent out more allies into the world because people will come and they won't understand it. They might be calling me he, they might be like just asking really offensive questions. But by the end of it, they're like going away and they're like, you know what? You're really nice. Like I've never met a trans person. You've really changed my mind. And I'm like, yeah. This is why I do what I do. Like it's yeah. such a nice feeling, and like, I, like I said, I think that's what we need more. If we just need to talk more, we need to all talk more as a society. This is not just about LGBT people; it's about everyone. We just all need to talk more. It humanizes us more because yeah. you know when you look at visibility in the media, often it's quite limited. Yeah. And to have that, you know, there's a, a big issue with uh, like people who have bad attitudes towards people with disabilities. I always say treat somebody in a wheelchair like you would treat anyone sat down. Yeah. But because there's not that visibility, people are scared of offending and so they become defensive. And then that's where like hate speech comes out. That's where people are clunky. And I think what you're doing is perfect. I Thank think you. it really challenges Thank that you, Leo. Any more questions? One more. So love is obviously the word of the day. So how do you guys shout out the hate and bring love into your lives? The mute button on Twitter. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Literally same. <laughs> Literally. I think it's a lot about your state of mind and I've learned a lot about like how you deal with negativity and whatever you focus your mind's energy on, you'll attract into yes, your life and it will be increasingly visible. And so I think sometimes it's mind over matter and if you focus on the love and the good, then you live life as a happier person. I agree. I agree. I agree Hold totally. On. Do you know what? I pray a lot as well. Like, I know they say in Catholic community that you can't be gay and stuff, but God made me this way, so clearly yeah. he loves me. Yeah. You know, and like I wear my um, blessed priest um, Catholic band and my pride band, which my mom goes crazy, bless her, but 
it is what it is. Yeah, I pray a lot, I manifest, and surround myself with people that get me and love me, yeah. instead of people that don't. Why would you do that? Put yourself in an energy that's just gonna bring you down. Yeah. I think that I just try to, on social media, just try to put things that are positive and um, educate people, because I feel like education is the key to, you know, kind of breaking that barrier. People are scared of what they don't understand. So if you're putting out messages that people can kind of relate to, you know, everyone comes from, you know, most people that in the LGBT community come from that kind of scared place and then they eventually branch out to the person they're meant to be. And even outside of LGBT, that happens, so they can relate to that. So if you find a way to connect with an audience that isn't LGBT, it just, it spirals. Mm. And Doug? Yeah, I don't think I'll be saying anything new, I feel like you've hit the nail on my head there, really. Yeah. Great, so that's about it. Thank you to everybody who's tuned in on Facebook and Instagram. If you haven't yet checked out the range, it's on the River Island website. Check it out. Don't forget, £3 from every sale gets donated to Ditch the Label and helps us provide the crucial support that we provide every single day. And finally, if you're impacted by any of the issues we spoke about tonight, perhaps you need help coming out or you're trying to still figure it out, head to the Ditch the Label website for advice and support. And happy Pride. Happy Pride. Yeah. Happy Pride. Happy Pride.